Just well, you know what's really funny? I was, I was saying the other day, like, you know, if you want to, if you want to do the double one, watch on each wrist. Yep. This one with that is hilarious. <laughs> it's a, it's a it's a really kind of killer combination. That actually, it kind of works really well. Hey y'all, it's Thomas with Chrono24, and today we are sitting down with David Reeves, founder of Reeves Bespoke. David got a start on Savile Row and has been in custom menswear for over 23 years, and he serves at Classic English Tailoring here in New York City. David, thanks so much for having us at your studio today. Oh, my pleasure. Well, we have a lot to get to, watches included, but I do want to start with just a little bit of background. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about where your uh, career in clothing got started? Uh, well, I was uh, in college uh, studying graphics in, in Leeds in the north of England there, and uh, needed a part-time job to kind of get me through college. And uh, I, uh, I was into clothing, I was into tailoring before I even got into it, and uh, I uh, started working for uh, a Savile Row company called Gives and Hawks. I think it's 175 years old. Pretty good one. I actually didn't know who they were at the time, um, and uh, I found myself working there. And I kind of got the bug really for it, and uh, I uh, I got more interested in it, um, and it was more of a calling to me than than graphic design was really. And uh, and I, I, but actually, I think a lot of the uh, a lot of my graphic design kind of eye or attention to detail does actually influence like the work that I do anyway. So. Uh, uh, I think that is uh, is an interesting kind of segue there, but um, yeah, so um, started off somewhere good, um, worked in the business for about 10 years for like uh, various places like um, uh, Richard James, Timothy Everest, um, Prada, Dover Street Market, the Comme des Garçons mm -hmm. store uh, in London, and um, eventually um, set up my own shop about 12 years ago here in New York. Yeah, what was the decision making behind that? At what point did you know it was time to go off on your own? Well, you know, the real answer to that, I think, actually was, uh, you know, the, well, the economy had actually crashed mm -hmm. and, um, you know, Obama was just kind of coming in and there wasn't really like much work around and everything. So it was that kind of era right then. And, uh, and I, you know, I had just recently come over to, to America and, um, and I was like, right, well, you know, I need to, I need to do something here. And, uh, and I, to, to be frank, I thought I'll just stick with what I'm doing and try and sell some suits and maybe, uh, go back to working for somebody else and I never did. <laughs> so I just kind of kept going with it actually. So it, it was, I always wanted to do my own thing, uh, but I think that probably spurred me on to, to do it. You know, so you, you're, you're in a kind of uh, a tough place like that and it's, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, isn't it? Yeah. You know, so it worked out. And we were talking before about how your goal is to stay Intentionally small, let's say. Yeah. You're not a you're not a bid shop trying with you know with 100 employees trying to do a nope. thousand suits a week. Tell me a little bit about, more about the Reeves approach to things. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I like to interact with the clients and I like to be quite hands on with this business and you know I, I enjoy that element of it. So um, I'm not like looking to be like a celebrity kind of tailor or like celebrity fashion designer or anything like that. I see every client. I measure up every client myself. I deal with every client. Uh, I'm usually just working in this space with an assistant and like one tailor perhaps. And uh, that's just how we work. And you know, if we, uh, we do a suit like, uh, you know, five suits a week, one suit every day, um, and that's fine for us. And that's how we kind of like it really. Um, we're not doing things like um, made to measure or kind of uh, half, um, I was gonna say half ass, but. <laughs> <laughs> approaches to things um, you know every time we, we do a suit it's always a, a great suit so if we're gonna say we're gonna do five to seven suits a week uh, they're always gonna be very good because we, we kind of I don't want to be judged uh, on doing a made to measure or a lesser kind of product so I want to be judged on the best product that I'm doing and I think even now even after 23 years I'm, I've, I've done thousands of suits and uh, I think I'm still judged on every kind of piece that I do like all the time which is like a lot of pressure but we're also kind of a bit kind of used to that now as well we've got it down to a nice kind of science so it works quite well before we tease it any further I'd say let's just open it up and see what we got okay sure this dress watch collection is kind of a little bit bit varied you know you've got something like black straps uh, you've got like the uh, uh, the white gold um, you've got the uh, Patek um, annual calendar which yeah. is a which is how we got connected in the first place. You were buying this on Chrono24. I did buy this on Chrono24, actually, yes. And then we started chatting a little bit, found out we had some mutual friends, and now we're here. <laughs> I know, there you go, serendipitous. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, uh, this is probably my favorite uh, watch yeah. in the collection. Yeah, the 5140 sets, of, yeah. yeah, beautiful, beautiful as well as some other Calatravas as well with some nice little details. I love the hobnail there. 
Yeah, it's, you know, this is kind of, um, seems a little bit, well, I think it's great, but uh, you know, with a new hobnail kind of coming out, I kind of knew they'd probably kind of go back to the hobnail before they did it with the new models in a way. I kind of felt that it was like almost time to go back to doing that, which they did do actually. Uh, but I just love this watch. It's actually quite a large kind of presence on the wrist. I mean, it's that white dial, which is quite big. Yep. This is only like uh, 36 um, uh, millimeters, uh, but it does seem quite large because that's so thin around there. And it's very kind of very flat, very nice, neat kind of watch for that. Um, so this is a nice kind of dress watch to wear, like navy suit, white shirt, navy tie, very minimal kind of look, mm -hmm. very sharp, very kind of purred down. Um, you know, I'd probably wear something like uh, this, you know, where it's like some tweeds and things like that. Yeah, a little bit more yeah. visually complicated. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, and then this is a little bit interchangeable as well, like the, uh, we've got the Langer 1815 here. Yep which is actually the, the smaller model. What's the, uh, is it 35 or 36? I can't remember. That's, that. Yeah, that sounds about yeah. right. Yeah, um, and um, yeah, absolutely beautiful, nice, simple kind of watch there. Um, and how did you get into Longa? Because I feel like a lot of people, if they're looking for something in that neighborhood, they'll go for protect and they'll stop there. What, what brought you to them? I think sometimes as well, I mean, people have said this, it's like they like Langer because it's not Patek or Vacheron or things mm -hmm. like, it's a little bit different. I do quite like things that are a little bit different, but I don't know, something about like, especially even looking at this watch right here, I mean, it might be the graphic design idea, but from a graphics perspective, like this dial just looks so clean and just perfect to me. And uh, yeah, just the neatness, the, the, the look of like Langer looks very kind of like modern and clean. Um, I think that kind of speaks to me a little bit, you know, the tailoring I like to do is often, uh, uh, very kind of purred down, very simple, but just very nice fabrics and put together in a nice way. It's not being like too clever with what you're doing, but it's just the execution. Yeah, just really nailing the basics, which I think this does as well. It does, I mean, yeah. Longa in general does a whole lot with, with very few ingredients. I mean, any good dress watch, I would say, does the same thing. So we have the day date, which we talked about before. That was your yeah. first, uh, yeah, your first serious one, like you said. It can be quite a blingy watch, like I was saying, it's got its own personality. Mm -hmm. But if you kind of like wear this with like a very kind of conservative suit or navy suit or a charcoal gray suit, um, this was probably certainly intended to be designed as a dress watch, really, I think, you yes. know. Um, it wasn't really meant to be worn with like t-shirt and jeans and, you know, anybody can do that, of course, if they want to. But I wouldn't do personally, I kind of feel that because of the amount of gold in it as well, I'd always be a bit bored about like dinging it on something and things like that. Yeah, better is um, just kind of peeking out a little bit. Yeah, I was just kind of like, I, I like to wear this like, you know, probably with a suit, but it's also like a very fun watch to wear as well. Like, uh, you know, to kind of put this one out here. It's a lot of gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the next one we were looking at, it's a bit unusual, is the uh, 50th anniversary moon watch. Yeah. Um, and this is a bit of an unusual one in this collection. Um, I really did like the moon watch. Um, every time I'd see somebody wearing one, it always kind of, you know, it, uh, impressed me and gave me like a bit of a warm feeling, that kind of watch in a funny kind of way. Um, mm -hmm. And I liked the 1960s ones, which had the flat links, mm -hmm. like a lot. Uh, and then this came out, which had the flat links. It had the uh, Omega symbol in the original Omega symbol from the 60s, which I like better. That kind of spoke to me, I guess it's details and, Graphics there and it's kind of going back to your roots a little bit with the uh, 50s and 60s watches. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're exactly right. Um, and I was thinking, you know, two tone um, can be a little bit tricky, but I love this in two tone because it kind of really reminded me of like a space vehicle or something like that, where you kind of see things in steel and they've got gold accents and things like that, mm -hmm. or like a, or like a space helmet with like a gold visor. And uh, not having a two tone bracelet makes it a little bit more reserved as well. Yeah, I, I was I was thinking that as well, but it, I guess it kind of like works here, and then like the darker kind of grey dial um, kind of all brings it back into focus. It looks kind of like quite a, a very uh, Quite a, a modern watch, but it's very, you know, it's kind of a bit kind of bit sci-fi. It's like even more spacey than the moon watch. It's kind of advertising its space credentials, I think, you know. Yeah, kind of well, watch. speaking of which, let's talk about some of the big boys here. These do, um, you know, even though you are a student guy and, and, you know, more of a dress watch guy, we still have some real deal tanks over here. Oh yeah, well, I mean, God, I've, I've got uh, I've got these three kids that uh, can throw things at me and spill things at me and I <laughs> lay booby traps for me on the weekends and stuff. So um, yeah, I you know I, I like to kind of have something that's like pretty tough, like uh, as a real kind of sports watch that's like kind of quite rugged but also very nicely put together. 
Um, I really like the, uh, this Blompon um, 55 ohms Nagurda Combat. It's uh, got a brush finish rather than the, uh, the, the steel, uh, which is, well, the polished steel. Yeah. Um, there's only 300 of these made, which is quite nice. Mm. I went into the AD for this and I, I looked at this, I just kind of fell in love with the watch, actually. Um, again, probably took me about a year to kind of think about going for it, and, and then I did. So a lot of times I think when you're buying, buying watches, it's always like nice to kind of want them for a while, isn't it? You know, like you've always got to kind of think about quite carefully what you're doing with this stuff. Yeah, it's good to be sure. But uh, yes, yeah, it's got a nice, you were liking that click earlier, weren't you? Yeah, yeah we can clear. do a little ASMR over here. This is where all the money goes in a diver. That's so very nice. We do love to see this. And tell me a little bit about the, um, speaking of divers, the James Cameron over here. Yeah, well, big James Cameron film fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not Titanic, more like Aliens and Terminator. This looks like, this looks like a Terminator, this watch, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like a tank. It's really, yeah, it's it's built by Skynet. Uh, but it's, um, yeah, it's um, it's really nice with the transitional blue to black. Mm -hmm. It's a very James Cameron kind of thing, like those kind of color palettes. Um, but um, yeah, they're both very like rugged watches. I guess this technically is a bit more like rugged, but I mean, I'm not going to be diving uh, in either of these watches. These are desk divers, really, pretty much. Um, go to the beach and them things like that, but this isn't going to go down 3,000 meters or whatever it can do, but... Uh, yeah, it is certainly capable of doing so. Even setting the time on this earlier, you could feel just how sturdy it is. And there's one watch that's in this room that's not here right now. I want to go ahead and grab it because I do want to talk about... It's an interesting one. one. In particular. Yeah, it's an interesting one. So what do we have here? This is Broken Pulsar Box. This is... Um, this is a gold-plated Pulsar. It's one of the original ones. It's, uh, it's uh, gold-plated and it still works. Never had a... Yeah, there we go. Made popular by um, President Gerald Ford, right, um, right as the course crisis was really taking off. This was, this was the bee's knees this at was, the time. This was the thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Is, yeah. Going from yeah, a president to this, I mean, being yeah. another president's watch, you just see how tastes have changed over time. Well, you know what's really funny? I was, I was saying the other day, like, you know, if you want to, if you want to do the double one, watch on each wrist, yep. this one with that is hilarious. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a really kind of killer combination, that actually. It kind of works really well. <laughs> but um, yeah, this, this is kind of like, um, I, I quite like the design of that, actually. I'd love to get one in like a, a solid gold, but like the, uh, even the original ones in solid gold are really beat up by now. Yeah. But I bet it's like quite impressive in like in, in the solid gold. But uh, yeah, it's it's a fun kind of kind of piece, isn't it? Very kind of 70s looking. It's very much of, of a time, which I, I really, really like. Um, one question that I always like to ask people is what's next? What's on your list? Uh, well, I was saying that earlier, I think, um, I think I'm okay for the time being, but I mean, if you know, dream watches or mind uh, the, uh, the the Langer data graph would be really quite nice. One day, one, one day, day, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. just sell all of these and then we'll, just we'll sell all them be a little bit closer. Maybe back. halfway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, David, thanks so much for having us here, walking us through your collection and your suits as well. We'll have another video coming out with David about how to pair watches with suits, so stay tuned for that. I'm Thomas of Corona 24 in New York at Reeves Bespoke. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy your watches.